See, every African country has you two. Mm -hmm. All the countries have musical. Exactly. We are lucky. Yeah, boy Nigeria, yeah, boy yeah, come. Mm -hmm. That Nigeria, sometimes we want to go against them. It's very funny to me. You can't fight them. It's a numbers game, first yeah. of all, and they have the numbers. Yes. Don't be stupid. Just be realistic. You don't need presenters all the time. If okay. you know your terrain. Mm -hmm. But like I said, there was a time that these South Africans came in, were putting on people, I fought. I fought. There was screams in meetings. I, mean, I remember one because meeting. Because I know <laughs> what I created. Mm -hmm. I know it's founded. There's no joke about it. I might not look too bougie or act like I did the work, but I know the work and yeah. I know I did it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I know where it's coming from. It's coming from deep. Yeah. I worked with a lot of radio stations that were not doing well. Mm -hmm. So I saw all the problems, all the things that was causing these stations not to go up. Mm -hmm. And I decided to do the opposite. Okay. You understand? I usually don't want to go into that subject because sometimes it makes it other go, people yeah. look like they didn't work hard mm -hmm. enough. But there's a lot of urban programming stations that started before us mm -hmm. that they didn't even cross five years. Yeah. So us being able to do 15 years is huge. Huge. No, big. But we've seen the difference that it's also made. Mm -hmm. Anybody can check even Ghana Music Awards. There was a time they had to come to Co us to revive it. Yes. They were working with us. They put us, uh, us all on the board. Yes. Sammy Foss and all yes. that to revive it. Yeah. Because we had the new thing that was coming. Mm -hmm. And you can even check the names from that time, from 2008 yeah. coming. Yeah. How, what names? You can even just take artists of the year and start see the difference. Yes. That it came. The music changed. Mm hmm and that's what and that's because of the urban radio format but anyway mm. Charlie let's let's zoom straight to action ladies and gentlemen mm. like we start we start record the show <laughs> before <laughs> so maybe we might have to go back to no, no, we things, start right? record the show before we for do the intro but then welcome to the loud lounge my name is DJ Slim this of course the street is watching mm. and this edition Charlie if you miss some you go miss some for life because I do yeah. have in the building the founder of why 107.9 FM in Accra, the capital. Up in the building, Nana Kwame Osei Sapon. You can call him the Nokus. <laughs> or if you're feeling yes, the vibe, you can call him Nostradamus. Hey, Apart from taxi drivers, truck, truck drivers, <laughs> or anybody who is driving right now, put your motherfucking two hands in the air and show some love mm. for the Nokus. Mm. <laughs> I'm getting there already. Yeah, bro. It's, 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 I'm it's, getting there already. This yo, is sweet. Mm. No, this is this, this has Thank to you. be. This Thank you, Charlie. Be guys, beautiful setup. I'm loving the moment. Thank you. Thank you so much. And this has to be because it's it's, it's been a long time. You know, we've had several conversations about mm. uh media and what media should have been or what media could have Ooh. been and what media is supposed to do. And we've I mean myself and you and myself and other you know people in the media space it didn't come on yeah, and it didn't come on backstage but it's right. it's high time we tell the stories for people to understand what it is first of foremost thank you some youngins who listen or who watch my channel and i know i have a, a viewership a, a, you know predominantly large viewership around the, the 18 to the 24 range because mm. they do want to know what is going on on the streets and of mm. course streets in the yeah yeah they one time oh yeah the picture of mom nana kwame or say Sapon, the Norcus. Yes, First time I came across you was um, um, in a movie. Mm. First time. Mm. <laughs> in a movie. Yeah, I try, and, I can uh, only try. Yourself, Lydia Forsen. Yes. And you played yeah. a role of, um, I think a bank manager or something like so. Hotel manager. So, so hotel manager. Yeah. We, they, we like them. <laughs> as only Lydia Forsen, she, she was a secretary that the Secretary, I was, yeah. You know, doing things because my wife was out of town. Yes. And mm. then uh, one mm. thing I can remember is like one scene where you were, uh, she be like, she set you up. We made me strip. Yeah, made you strip. Yeah, that was my body double though. 
<laughs> oh, for real? Yes. It wasn't you. What am I supposed to say? Yeah, That's my body double. I see that. Yeah. The, the, camera, the camera pan <laughs> where that is so a uh, senior man. Come you know, senior man, he asked this. <laughs> senior man, to me, I'm not going to be a senior man. I'm not going to be a senior man. <laughs> so, yeah, so let's just assume it was a body double. Anyway, <laughs> so fast forward. The next time I heard of Nana Kwame was like mm. a, I had a call. And uh, when I picked up the phone, it's like the that baritone voice. Yeah. Yeah. DJ Slim Nee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie, I heard about your good works and all that. You know. <laughs> I'll be coming down to Kumase. I want to yes, see uh, you. I want to vibe with you. True, you know, we have true, to get this true, wife and thing up true, and popping. And, and that was a great day for me because, you know, mm. my first time listening to an urban radio station, first time listening to an urban radio station, I told myself that, yo, look, come what may. This is what uh, I want to do. This is what I want to do. Was wife. And I remember this like, uh, this was way back in time, like 2008-ish, there about. Yeah. And I remember, I, I never go forget. That was the time that they built that crown more fresh, right? Yeah. So fresh. we're driving, I was driving. I wasn't driving. It was my father who was driving and we're about to escort my, my sister. She was yeah. going back to the States. So, okay. they were listening to YFM. Okay. And I saw that crown more, how beautiful the place, the scenery. Mm. And I was listening to, Jer was it Jeremy? Probably. Yes, Jeremy. And the way Charlie did she did slang and I don't want to trap playing no more. I couldn't answer because the building yeah, and man. how the place all felt like yo. Truly I, urban. Yo, a day Yankee or what? Mm. And and I asked myself, and I said, yeah, Charlie, so this be Accra? Is this how urban radio station is? Charlie shit. Sadi way may ye be. May mm. basadi way so be. It was the same for me. And Later on, I got to know people in there. I got to understand how the whole thing worked. And I got to know, know yourself mm. as being the person who pushed this thing. Today, break it down for some of us. Mm. How did it start? How did it all start? Wow. First of all, let me start. You see, sometimes <laughs> when you say founder, people are a little concerned. Is it your money or whatever? Okay, so let's just... Take it as this. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying founder, mm -hmm. let's say the one who curated the programming for this okay. thing. Okay. Right. So it's not my money, but it's my idea mm -hmm. that moves the station. Yeah. And this is how it happened. Let me start with my radio life. I started radio. I got interested in radio, same mm -hmm. way as you're saying. Let's say around 95, 96. Okay. Right? six form days mm -hmm. and around that time a lot of people had returned from the states and stuff and you know those cassettes yeah recordings yeah of radio yeah some from the uk some from the states i remember mm -hmm. names like mr fixie mm -hmm. there was um midnight mm -hmm. you know on the state side there was chris Coldfinger. there was uh other people like mm -hmm. uh Basically, the guys on, um, I don't know if it was WBLS, mm -hmm. some of, uh, I think Isaac Hayes was even on WBLS, but um, there was Boxy, mm -hmm. whose voice mm -hmm. I connected with. There was Boxy, that's one of the names he was, I think he was on Hot Night 7. But these were recordings from the States that okay. I listened to. And the moment I heard it, I was like, because growing up, people were like, oh, you have such a voice. You, mm -hmm. you should join a choir, you should sing. You know, but I wasn't interested in all of that. I've been in choirs in school and stuff, but you know, when I heard this, I was like, it looks like the guy's having so much fun. Mm -hmm. What job is this? Mm -hmm. And they said they get paid well too. I was like, are you sure? This is what I want to do. <laughs> Straight up from that time. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to do. So when I entered university, Kwame Nkrumah, University of Science and Technology. Mm -hmm. K-N-U-S-T. Yes, the first time I was in uh, Katangi. Oh. Oh, fellow charge my, my fellow fellow charge <laughs> charge that'd be why they fire me so you know i i was with a, a senior from st peter say oraka mm -hmm. we're talking and i was like you see up there there's a radio station i was like are you serious he says yeah and next that's going that to showed me contact before he finished the sentence i was there i rushed to the place i was like i want to get in how do i get in mm -hmm. they're like oh okay 
you come for an interview and uh, we'll put you under somebody to learn. Mm -hmm. I was like, let's start. Let's start right now. Straight. That's how I got on. Contato Radio, 1997. Mm -hmm. So it's actually 27 years now. Shit. Since I first had a chance to touch the console. Microphone. Shit. Yes. That's how it started. And I've been about it from then. Mm. After school. So this is what it is. Urban radio wasn't really working in Ghana. So after school, by the time I got back to Accra, mm -hmm. no station really was existing apart from Vibe, which had gone underground. It was bankrupt mm -hmm. and it had gone underground. We had ser serious problems like the transmitter could only cover a little bit of Accra. We had mm -hmm. power outages. It was a lot of issues over there, but it was kind of underground. Right? Okay. I love, that was the only urban radio station That's that still vibe, existed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Vibe as of. 2G2 yeah. that I came back mm -hmm. home after school. So I joined in. I did four years of vibe okay. without pay. Wow. Yes. They said they were bankrupt. They didn't have pay. They didn't have money. They couldn't pay. And T so vibe was like 91.1, right? Yeah. 91.9. Okay. 91.9. Uh, yeah, around the time I joined, nine. Yeah. yeah. Nine. At the time I joined, they were operating from Vibe Cafe. Uh, trust Towers first floor, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that was quite an experience. I had a chance to work with people like Sir Kujumensa, I call him Sir Kujumensa, mm -hmm. um, Uncle Tony, may he rest in peace. You know, around that time, Jessica's big sister was around. She actually noticed my voice. Okay. And this is what happened. We were working with one Baba, Mm -hmm. Cardinal Solutions mm -hmm. upstairs. Me and Gege and Abele. After school, we wanted to, you know, do our service with him. So mm -hmm. we had started something so that he would ask for us for service and come out, which didn't fall through. But he was upstairs, that okay. same building. And there was this guy, Myopia, my mate from preparatory school, okay. who worked with Vibe, sales mm -hmm. and marketing, I guess. And he used to, he know he knew our boss. Mm -hmm. So he used to come upstairs. And, you know, we used to conversate. It was like, one day, come look for me downstairs. So I just went looking for him. Mm -hmm. I saw Kelly and Kujumensa sitting and I just greeted and said I was after myopia. Mm -hmm. And they were like, Kelly was like, you hear his voice? Yeah. Okay, myopia is not around, but yeah. this, this, this. But you have a voice. And I said, I've been doing campus radio. You have demos? I said, I have demos. You want to bring it? Let's check it out. I brought it. Yeah, we like you, but we don't pay. We don't have money. We're bankrupt. But I was still there. I no good one. So this is what happened. My mom at that time wanted me to, my mom was stepping, okay, she was up in the political race, right? Mm -hmm. So she, at the inside around that time there, but she even ended up as deputy Eastern Regional Minister. So around that time, she wanted me to do my service at the office of the president. Okay. And I was like, no, I'll do radio. Hey, the radio is not paying you. So she actually threw me out of the house. Issues. Yes. That's how I ended up. Because I was coming back late. She was like, first of all, you don't get paid. And secondly, you're going to come home to endanger me. Like thieves could come with you. Mm -hmm. You're coming up late. Yeah, yeah. Not under this roof. Find a place. You know. So I really paid for radio. Wow. So I call it my radio degree. Mm -hmm. Those, those four years. <laughs> <laughs> Those four years, I call it my radio degree. Yeah. You know, it taught me almost everything. Because sometimes we could put together a team and everything looks like it was working and something will happen and the whole team will collapse. Either somebody comes to poach somebody and takes them. Mm -hmm. The team that we thought we had, you know, there was a lot of struggles and things, but we were, part, we were still on it, mm -hmm. you know, till I participated in. So this is, well, to say my, my history properly, inside... KNUST before, I think my third year, the school mm -hmm. took the dial from Contato, claiming that it belonged to the school. Okay. So what's focused right now yes. used to be Contato 94.3. .3. Yeah. That's the first dial I started my radio life okay. on. Contato 94.3, right? Wow. Then they took it. But they didn't start the station till I left the, the school. Okay. You, um, What's the name of the station again? Focus. Focus. Yeah. They didn't start till I Yeah, because Focus, I joined Focus that somewhere around 2005. Okay. Yes. Focus took a lot more years. I think I left. But then there was two stations on campus. Continental. Continental. And Focus. So I jumped Focus. to Continental. Oh, okay. 
in my final year. So how so, did they receive you? I mean, I know I know the rift between. Okay, around that time, I had shells going out to Aloysius. <laughs> He's a big cop right now. Big man thing. The big last man. time I saw him, I was like, yo, that's my boy. He's a big, 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 big cop. I don't even know his position, but I know his farm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he was the hall president. Mm -hmm. And one guy who was my cosmate, Amani, mm -hmm. he's in the States now. They were roommates. Okay. And they controlled the radio station. Great. So it was easy to get on. Because I know for a fact that no, you know, there will if, be you be, if you be if you Katanji, <laughs> if you be Katanji, yeah. how mm. how can you cross over yeah, yeah, yeah. to happened. Unity Hall and it, climb it, it the twin towers? It happened for one, for <laughs> once, it happened and yeah, it was in my case. So I was at Continental till I came back. So when I came home, it was vibe. Yeah. I was a vibe. Then in 2006, yeah. I went on Survivor. Okay. Africa. Yes. Panama. So it was after that that the acting came. So when I came back, it was an interview. Hey. I've forgotten the name of a magazine. And uh, just for, for viewers, mm. Survivor Africa, I beg, make you Google them. And mm. uh, I think after I had the encounter with you, mm. it, it struck me, say, ah, be like, I see you for some place Somewhere. before. I've been, I, that I used to when, live on billboards. <laughs> that was when. I was going to rap, rap yeah, for um, um, Survivor. Survivor. So that was when I go crush on one edition of uh, Mnet, uh, the, the magazine that they used to send out, the multi-choice okay. magazine that they used to send out. So if you don't know, TV Guide back then used to be a book. Now they press on your remote and then you go see them for there. Yeah, yeah. Back then, it yeah, used it to be a book, book that, that they would every send month. every month that they would send to you. So I think one of the uh, one of one month, you were on the cover the of, the, of the of the. I made it look like I had won. Yeah, <laughs> how, the multi choice, how they went about multi choice, yeah. Mnet, or right now you call Huge them DSTV. And stuff, yeah. DSTV, right now they go call them DSTV. Yeah. Now Kwame Osesapo was on one of the editions. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> crazy, so man. It was something, it was an LPM that I read on radio. I was like, I like to do so. This is crazy. I like to do something like this. Okay. And I, I joined the audition and I got on. Mm. You know, it was tough. It was crazy. Survivor is another book. We we can that we, we'll talk about this some other time. But yes, when I came back from Survivor, then I think I got approached by hits. It had just been bought by multimedia. Okay. It used to be Radio Hits. Radio Hits. Yeah. Okay. And now it became Hits FM. Okay. Multimedia got it. So I was the first presenter for their drive time, afternoon drive, cruise control. Yes. So I started cruise control, but I did hits for only six months. I just did my probation because what I thought the urban radio. This was a chance that I had. It. This is the first time I had a chance at a proper functioning urban radio that was station paying. that's supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. That was going to pay me end of month. And they were going about that. I personally knew the programs manager. And I don't want to, so I won't mention it. <laughs> so I don't want to this, but I knew he didn't understand the programming. Okay. See, urban programming, you need to be a pimp. You need a pimp mentality. Okay. It's not for soft guys, cool guys. Actually, at Atlantis, there was this poster that said, the radio business, and I might be, I might not say it exactly as it is. I might not be able to quote yeah, it. Perfect. And it was a quote from a female. Okay. A woman, um, sales or marketing big person from some radio station says the the radio business is a, a long and narrow money making plastic okay long mm -hmm. and narrow money making trench mm -hmm. where pimp survive and weak men die like dogs okay it's crazy think crazy. about it Crazy. Where pimps survive and weak men die. What do we do? We pimp things. Yeah. You give a name, a show, a name. It doesn't exist. You create it. You pimp it. Yeah. You create it. You give it a face, almost mm -hmm. a human face or whatever, mm -hmm. and go sell it. Yeah. It's pimping. And people buy it. It's pimping. Pimping. 
You know what I'm saying? So you need that kind of mentality to be good with it. Mm. So I knew he couldn't. I actually, <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure, I knew him. He was an Indian boy who used to come to contact. I, we, you know, cat boys, we didn't see you as nothing, <laughs> this guy. So when I met him as my boss here, actually, it was a time that I went to see Kwesi Chum. Exactly. And I told him straight that, you know, the guy that you have as a programs manager, the maximum he can do is a cut out the potential of the radio station. He looked at me like, who is this guy? Who said, and so before I have, went, no, no, you have Sakura uh -huh. and the face in my cabinet. You see, and what to be in your vim, you see, 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 when I had issues, I told her, I was like, if you want to see him one-on-one, -on -one, I can arrange it. Okay. I was like, I would like to. So I went trust hours those days. They were in the building. I don't mm -hmm. know if they still are. I went, I was able to meet him. One. He's actually family, but he doesn't know. Okay. You know, yeah, he's actually family through my dad's side, but he doesn't, I, I usually don't use those things, but I sat in front of him and I told him that, listen, this is not, it's not going to work. Because mm. the kind of wahala he was giving me, mm -hmm. for example, I used to do some, countdown okay. at the end of my show. Inside, trying to make the music go high. So mm -hmm. some of the new music we had, okay, so Reggie's Peaches, I remember those days. Yeah. Peaches, 5-5, uh, 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 hotgirl.com, mm -hmm. you know, was number one. Number And when I was starting my show, I did a little snip of the songs that came mm -hmm. and we'll see how it goes today. This guy mm -hmm. said, nah. Why? I can't do it. Why, dear, why? So I knew he didn't understand urban music program. Oh, but okay. So let me ask this. I'm going to set up Hits FM. No? Yeah. As they called you, did they define the radio station exactly as, a, as an, an urban, urban radio? music radio? Let me tell you one secret. You know the young and young at heart yeah. from, for YFM? Yeah. I took it from it. Oh, shit. That was my, like, that was, <laughs> Shouts going out to Vaughn. He was a general manager. I still will not mention the programs when he got Shouts to Vaughn. You know, but yeah, in my orientation, that's what he said. This is radio for the young, young and, and the young at heart. But I saw they weren't cutting it, how they were going. It got to a time, even my drive time, they wanted me to do four hours of Ghana music. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to play the other boys trying to rap, and which wasn't the popular ones we had on radio. And what they type of Ghana music? Me. Said they say four hours of Ghana music. Mm -hmm. By that time, the music was all concentrated to Apiatus in the mix. Apiatus? You played 10 we songs, eight of them <laughs> was Apiatus. No disrespect to Apiatus. I remember I've said this somewhere and I saw somebody tag him. No disrespect. That interview was shot, so I didn't explain. No disrespect to Apiatus. He made great music for us that yeah. time. On the Okonya today. Top notch. But what I'm saying is that that was the, the days that Music was controlled by executive producers. Okay. We're talking about Slip. We're talking about Goodies. Big ben. We're talking about Big yeah. Ben, Donaldson. Yeah. You know, we're talking yeah. about, uh, what's this other guys? Ajikut. Ajikut, yeah. You know. Top guys. So these were the guys that the boys were like, boy, boy to them. Yeah. They came to him. Those days, you couldn't track. You took the music to him. He took it to go do... Copies of the song. Copies. Then, yeah. So Tom Ten or so Tom Five to me. Mm -hmm. So they go, yes, I must have boss. Then well, why they give up something. Mm -hmm. That was the music then. Okay. So there was very little way of progressing. The artists were feeding artists. Were, we build the artists to the extent that they stood on their own and now they have their own record labels and stuff. Okay. Back then, artists had to feed from the, the executive hands of producers, these executive yeah. producers, or you are not going to be heard on radio. Because they had the power. They had already paid to all the PDs around. Yeah. That was when Payola, people were getting cars, land, yes. and stuff. Yeah. So when he pays, he gives you a car or land. It's not just one artist. So yeah, well, it's artists coming from his camp. Okay. So it, when anytime he has an artist, he pushes the music to you to mm -hmm. play. And that's what was going to get radio play. Mm. 
if you're an artist and you are not coming from that, you are not going to get radio play. Okay. I personally took that chance. So back to the script. So at hits, they wanted to me to do all of that. I was like, no, I can't do that. I can't do four hours and the music is, that's when they play, their life is dying and mm -hmm. all of that. The music was becoming stale. Okay. It was coming from the same, a few executive producers. And definitely when an executive producer gets a formula right for an artist, Chance that he'll tweak it a little bit for the next artist. Mm. So the music was sounding the same. Yeah. Same producers, same trajectory, BPR, quite it was, progression. And even, it was sounding even, the same. Yeah. So the music wasn't growing. Yeah. Meanwhile, there were other people doing all these skill -ons. There were all these boys doing their thing, Jay trying Joe, to come Jay up. Town. Nobody was giving them Joe you know, that chance. Even the ones who had the chance to be big, through, let's say, reality shows. Let's take people like Irene and Jane. Uh -huh. They had come up with an album on Veiled or something. Yeah. How many radio stations had nah, time nah, to nah, even nah, play? Nah. It was all considered underground. These are the people who are coming or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So from hits, so I had to resign. I was like, I can't be behind this music. From hits, I went to Atlantis. At okay. Atlantis, I only had uh, a Saturday morning show. Okay. But every Saturday morning, I put on somebody from this underground, and this is how I was doing it. You know how Atlantis was bougie and everything. Mm -hmm. So I don't want Extremely. to bring- Extremely. Around that time, you know how these artists were underground in Pablo Abinia. Jack. I don't want to bring anybody there before they see some pen is missing. They can't <laughs> find something. So I was going out <laughs> and to record the artist, cut it. <laughs> and put it on radio. I used to call the last 20 minutes of my show, Access Granted. Okay. So I say, Access Granted. This week, Access Granted, we caught up with this guy. He's, he says his name is OJ Black. Mm -hmm. So I asked him what, how he got his name OJ Black. Mm -hmm. Then I hit, this is what he said. And I'm OJ Black, I started, you know, mm -hmm. and I went, listen, I had pe people that nobody is bod was bothering with. Mensa, uh, okay, let's put Mensa out. Uh, manifest. Mm -hmm. I actually did phone interviews and cut it. Wow. Kubolo. Mm -hmm. Those who were outside. Yeah. Those who were inside, Richie, that time nobody was bothering Richie. Nobody really every, cared. Every Saturday, I put somebody on inside this access grant. So at the last minute of the interview, that I say, let's enjoy music from, oh, I put Ras Bomba on. Who didn't I put her on wow. inside my little stint with Atlantis? Because I always believed in the music that wasn't getting airplay. Mm -hmm. I was like, why is this music? I didn't understand the Payola game around that time. Okay. You but understand? You had, you had, but all that I saw was that there was a difficulty mm -hmm. playing this kind of music on radio. And okay. I thought it was good enough music for to it be to be played. played. Okay. You understand? So I got mad at Atlantis. This is a long story. Now I'm coming to how I got my job at Y. So okay. I was on Atlantis and Global Media, still our partners with Silverbird, right? Yeah. So they were now bringing the cinemas and they were warming up the mall. You said rightly yeah. that the mall wasn't even properly finished. Yeah. So the food court, they were showing free movies. Oh, okay. And they were, you know, announcing it on my show, Saturday morning show, mm -hmm. you know, on Atlantis. And it was working for them. But that I was taking them small, small money. Okay, so this is what it is. On Atlantis, apart from a contract, it give me a chance to go out there. Get your own deals. Get deals yeah. and split. I with don't the remember station. the exact, you know, but yeah. split with the station. So I went out to get these announcements and mm -hmm. all of this is happening here at the brand Sport. This is what's going on. Then all that money was split with the, with, with, with the station. So... The money was so small that I think it didn't make sense for me to go take the money weekly. So I was like, let's make it every two weeks. Okay. And it makes sense to take car to come and pick the money. That time, mobile money, all these things were not. Yeah. Bad. So I had to directly go for the money and take it to the station. So some Friday, the money wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. So I got very pissed. And then Saturday, I didn't do it. <laughs> right, I didn't do the announcement. Yeah, so I, I guess they felt it. So they were calling me Monday or Tuesday. I forgot it was an AU day. Mm -hmm. It was a holiday, 
And just that morning, I was so pissed at Atlantis. And back then, you know, when I didn't really have kids and stuff, when I got pissed, I just took a paper from your secretary and wrote my resignation for you. Simple. Left. This time I was walking home to go write my resignation. I was, <laughs> that, I was that pissed. And Atlantis used to be maximum a thousand meters from my house. I used to live at Northridge. Oh, okay. Yeah. Where Metro TV is right now, used okay. to be my grandfather's house. Oh, I used to really? Live there after school, yeah. So I walked to Atlantis. Okay. It was a walking distance. You know, Atlantis was one of my best deals still, you know, YFM, because I mm -hmm. walked. Mm -hmm. No transport. No transport. Yeah. Even on zero days cost. That, zero <laughs> cost. I just walked to the station and back home, mm -hmm. you know. So I was just walking to go write a letter. Then I got a call from Global Media. Okay. I was like, you know what? I just resigned. Go and talk to Atlantis if you want to do it. They're like, really? We have a new station coming. Friday, come, let's talk. Oh, for real? That's how I got my job at YF. So then you bore. Then bore. you bore Atlantis. I bore where at the walk. Where the <laughs> go house, to pack. More than to pack. Oh. And the go house just go right to my left and can't give them, say, you know what? What's up? Me, enough. Me my way. That time Monday resigned. He wasn't, he doesn't think about it. <laughs> yes. That. But yes, so wow. They called wow, me Friday. What, what a way to start. <laughs> yeah, Friday I went there. It was what they call the focus group discussion. I was the oldest person in the room. It was a group of young people, maybe about 20 people. Mm -hmm. And we sat, we had questionnaires and things going around. What okay. do you want in radio? What would you like? And I realized that all that, and so all this while, mm -hmm. I had this passion. Why is urban music radio not working in Ghana? That's the only radio that I want to do. I have a but great it wasn't voice. working. I, I had and a great voice. I the, always had a great. I can speak three. I can do three programs. Yeah. If you take me to PS PS FM, well, I can do so. the work. But that wasn't. That's not the programming that I'm excited about. Mm -hmm. But my type of programming wasn't working. Okay, so we're we're, we're talking about 2006 ish seven 2007. This actually was 2008. This was May. What was AU Day? 25th May? Yes. It was yeah. around 25th yeah, May. Yeah, yeah. So I started my job at YFM in maybe June. June, okay. And the station was launched in November. November, okay. But all through this while, I was thinking of a master plan, putting together programming that would work. Okay. All throughout my wahala with what's happening here, what's happening here. Atlantis was urban, but like I said, adult contemporary is not yeah. exactly my fit. Okay. But it was better than the rest that's available. Mm -hmm. So I went for it. But then I had the chance to start the program. So in that meeting, I was telling them, Africa is buzzing. I remember even in that meeting, I had a laptop by then. I was playing some of the music. I think I remember I played Tic Tac, JJC mm -hmm. crew. Mm -hmm. One money, mm -hmm. I think. Tic Tac, Rhea Benson. Yeah. Played. I played a couple of, I was like, listen, the New music jam. in Africa is moving. Yeah. And I think we should move with it. But from the other things that he said in the room, I realized what I was trying to do was exactly what they needed. Okay. One person who also I must mention was in that meeting. So she's a day one as DJ Kess. Oh, Kes yeah, she, was, she was in that meeting. Kes Mali. Yeah. And after the meeting, they asked. It looked like they, I had already been taken as a program by the Jakana. Okay. You know, and they were like, oh, those who are interested should bring their name. She was the only person that, you know, came to say she would want to work. So she cried here. Yeah, after that, from time to time, she kept calling me. What's going on? When are we launching? You know, so a day one, is DJ Kes. Kes Mali. Yes. Big up to old time, yeah. DJ Kes. Tell you. Every time, Empress. Empress. <laughs> the baddest. <laughs> Kessington. Oh, yeah. My, one of my favorite. Uh, that's uh, how. Yeah, one of my favorite DJs, though. That's 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 how YFM started for me. Nice. Nice. But then, fast forward, you know, YFM is in existence right now. Mm. Everything is going on smooth and all that. Mm. 
but we realized that, you know, YFM had key several or not even key people, like several personalities on mm. that brought different dimensions to how YFM expanded mm. and their reach all together. I mean, we're talking about um, the J Foley's, we're talking about Jeremy, we're talking about DJ Kes. Uh, these people are, okay, to me, how I heard YFM, these people are like the, the day once. Mm. Uh, later on, we got to hear of DJ Flexi. Uh, we got to hear of uh, DJ Snoop. Flexi is actually a day one. Uh, Flexi well. is a day one as well. Yeah. Uh, DJ Snoop. Uh, yeah, Snoop, them joined up. Yes, like. DJ Kwame. Uh, Killer Fingers, uh, you know, later on had Giovanni. We had so many people, Mesna, mm. all these mm. wonderful people joining mm. the conversation. Mm. And first question, how did, because you've been there all this, mm. all, all this while. Yeah. How did these individuals directly affect or influence the YFM brand or the urban radio format in Ghana? Okay. So you get closer to the mic. Apart from yes. apart from putting together mm -hmm. the programming, yeah, I also recruited everybody. Oh, for real? Yeah. Now I was a family friend. I always been a family friend. Mm -hmm. She was coming to town. You know, I was like, now nah, there's a new radio station coming up. You know, you used to do radio at Groove before you left for the states. Are you interested? So she actually met. My bosses, they, they finalized with her even before me. Mm. Yeah, because she had to rush back to the States and I was here. I was like, go ahead, deal with her. Once we have her, I put everybody together. Like I said, I had a master plan. Okay. I had a plan to the extent that I remember going with DJ Blow. I was like, okay, why don't we airband presenters come together mm -hmm. and go see somebody with a dial mm -hmm. that's not working mm -hmm. and tell them, listen, we can make this work. Okay. We can partner with you mm -hmm. and make this work and maybe be half owners. Okay. You know, so I even remember I made a move on that. I went to Blow. At the time, Blow left Atlantis. I was getting pissed because the man was passing at me. So rest in peace, Big J. I was passing some comments that got me mad. It's not the, I don't know too much of soccer. It's not the name on the, on the back of the shed, but the name on the front of the shed that matters. Something, mm. some kind of comments that, was getting me peeved, you know. So even I hadn't left yet, but I got together with Blue. I think we went to my first time in Ashima, mm -hmm. Senna Radio. Mm -hmm. There was a radio station there. Yeah, went yeah, ahead of yeah, ahead of that. Went to see the owner on the same thing, but he was on another tangent altogether. <laughs> so we left it at where it was. But this is it. So I was looking at all these people and saying. That time Eddie Blay wasn't in radio. Mm -hmm. Black Boy wasn't in radio. Yeah. I was like, why are all these talents wasting? Mm -hmm. that we we need to put so when the opportunity came I knew who to call so you called everybody I put everybody together one after the wow. other wow grand, the grand, grand plan the next day the plan was basically to revive urban music radio because I felt Ghana needed impact I created here day wow you might have to tell me <laughs> No. We know the music before YFM. Yeah, yeah, no, yes. like I said, we all know the music. Yes. If we're going to be realistic, we all know the music before YFM. Yeah. We know the music after YFM. Mm -hmm. You tell me. We but know do, entertainment do, scene okay. after YFM. Because sometimes, see, people get it confused and say, oh, social media was going to make it happen anyway. But social media wasn't going to make it happen. Let mm -hmm. me tell you why. Because social media was going to make us listen to people in silos. Okay. There are people who mess with Street is Watching mm -hmm. as a podcast. Yeah. But there are some other people watching different channels. channels. Yeah. But the difference in radio is that at a certain time, the presenter is telling you, this is the greatest rapper in Ghana right now. Mm -hmm. And let's all listen to him right now. It's okay, an so experience. The collective. That collective experience at one time mm. makes a huge difference. Mm. That's what radio did. So let's not confuse it and take all the credit and say, oh, social media. Even today with all these years of social media, still it's okay, we fans. Hey, Shady, mm -hmm. oh yeah, now mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you understand. Mm -hmm. But radio put everybody at one place at the same time. And and, and you're huge. right. And you're right because uh, 
I, I can say, me to me, I can, from my experience, I can, mm. I can say for for a fact that there are so many activations that you did around music mm. that did not only just affect music, but affected people economically Lifestyle. as well. Lifestyle as well. Because Even Tawala, do you know yeah, how many people ended was up a, selling They had crafts. a foreign crew. No, even at the entrance. Yes. Do you know how many people started selling crafts? I've, I've never been to Tawala before. <laughs> there was... A but critical number of people all of a sudden whose life had, had, had changed. Crazy. You know, I had friends in Accra. I'll be able to mm. oh, tell Wednesday. We are yeah. going out on a Wednesday. The city, you see, and maybe we'll talk about urban radio program, urban music program in itself and what it does to a city. Every city needs it. Tell me why. Because in an urban setting, it's people from a whole lot of backgrounds. Yeah. And yes, yeah. Yeah. Our port. Yeah. Now, inside that port, we have to find a way of getting by each other mm -hmm. or find a place where we can conversate mm -hmm. or think we are all together yeah. somehow. Radio provides that. Not yeah. any radio. Okay, with well, the rest of the radio, they do their other things. And today <laughs> I was making an analogy. See, Let's say a station like Joy FM. Yeah. They came out. And what would you say most of their job is trying to get governance right, mm -hmm. fight against corruption yeah, yeah. and things. Credible news. How well have they succeeded with all of that? Still, they are, they are fighting Bad governance it. continues. Still, they are fighting Corruption it. continues. Still, they are fighting Even they've had a morning show presenter join the government, but there's still corruption. I'm fat. <laughs> so how deep is their work? I'm fat. If we were a political party, YFM was a political party, and we promised that we're going to change the music and entertainment scene. Look at us today. Have we done that or not? You have, to a larger degree. So that's what it is. Urban, every urban setting needs a place where they can. That's why naturally, even in urban centers, they have slang or mm -hmm. street language yeah comes Lingos, up naturally Lingos developed by the Be people yeah because now you can hear a lot of people even speaking the niger okay mm -hmm. you know all of that has become part it happens when people meet up mm -hmm. like that in that same struggle because it ends up being a struggle in urban centers apart from those who really have the money and are out there it ends up being a struggle because most people are not seeing it up there, mm -hmm. hustling and all of that, trying to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. And out of that, some music comes out of it, mm -hmm. out of the struggle. Yeah. And it needs to be pushed. Yes. The normal radio station or urban radio station doesn't have time enough to push, to push these, these things. Yeah. Because they are doing politics. Yes. They're doing, like there's a time where that, Somebody high up on right from Australia asked me, I understand when the president died, you took like 20 minutes before to announce that. I was like, yes, Joy FM will do it easily because at the time the president was dying, there was somebody from Joy following the car. <laughs> we, where we are, and president, it's not easy to just go on there and say the president is dead. I had to double show, double, double mm -hmm. show, double, 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 double show, show before. before I go on air and say that. I can't just wake up and say the yeah. president is dead. Because people don't even know you, you understand? for, for yeah, breaking for, that type of news. Type of information. Yeah. And I remember that there was Giovanni by me. Giovanni tells me the president is dead. I might take Gio Giovanni serious. <laughs> am, I, so joking. am I supposed to take Giovanni serious? <laughs> Giovanni is telling me the president. He was played. He's telling me the president that is president. dead. And I'm looking at him like, Yo, <laughs> chef, you're steady. Don't, don't play. <laughs> you're steady. Don't play around. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You play too much. But yes, so um, with that kind of programming, yeah. it aids bring, bringing so, those talents. So I understand those talents. I understand the, 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 the unity that it brings and all that, the economic mm. value that it also creates. But, you know, I think recently mm. the whole country would rally behind the fact that entertainment has been a very, very lucrative, you know, sport or an adventure 
as as it is because we have the year of return which is you know riding on from yeah which is riding on enter, yeah highly riding on entertainment because most of these people when they come into the country i'm sure most of, most of the experts when they enter into the country they don't even think about the 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 sites the tourism sites and all that they they just want to party the because parties. that is what they've been introduced to and they like the new sound as against even the fact that afrobeat is trending worldwide and worldwide. people feel the high life rhythm and the notes in that the, was the fight. Yeah, yeah. That was some of the fight. You know, I put together mm-hmm. the Afropolitan mix. I had to defend it like seven times. Afropolitan normal, mix, one of a the normal biggest. radio station. Yeah. You see, during lunch times, yes. what we know here is play a couple of ballads and see, country, book, country book, music, book, book, country book, music. Book numbers. But I said no. Africa music is on the rise. Mm-hmm. Let's play. Listen. You think you're a rapper in Ghana until you've had somebody from South Africa and we like, God damn it. Or some boy from Kenya. You're like, uh, dang. I for, I for speed up. Polish. That's what brought us up. Mm. I had to defend that lunch, that three hours of African music. I had to defend it time and time. Finally, currently on YFM in Accra is not even playing because at the certain time it was taken off. Yeah, it you was, know what I'm it's, saying? It's, yeah. it's also off in Kumasi. In Kumasi. But that was one of the shows that really brought people, you know, to speed, especially our artists. That, yo, my wedding now the Omu ye free, a Kenya Hoban. I know she, your word. You know? So you as an artist, they play your music, they play somebody else, you start saying, hmm, me didn't need a week, I can't say that. Sound. I'm saying, we know it was a combo base. So now you go to the studio and say, yeah. boss, do this for me. Nice. You know? So that was, that, that was critical. And, yo, it's, it's, it's me, when we, and even before YFM, I was following, like I said, this master yeah. plan. When they talk to you about the movement, when they tell you about Lyricist Lounge, yeah, I started it. Okay, by, yeah. Uh, later, it became blessed the mic. Py by Py, we were the main supporters. We were the oh, people who shit. were funding and making it happen. Because I've been about it from day one. Like I'm interested in these artists. I believe in their music. Why is nobody supporting these guys? But okay, so let me ask you, why mm. is nobody supporting them? Around that time, it was the payola. So if you now, do not have money, okay, so this is this is my okay. Mm. Maybe I came into radio at a time where mm. payola was oh, if if you call it payola or if people define it as payola, because mm. I believe where we have a system, because when I used to work with YFM, mm. there were times that you, you know, in fact, there were times that we had a strict playlist, mm. you're supposed to play three songs from uh, selection A, mm-hmm. two songs from B, mm-hmm. three songs from C. And so that will fill up an hour. And then you are supposed to repeat that in the next hour. And then if your show is like a three hour block, mm-hmm. you know the type of songs that you have to play. So to play. if you take a song out and you insert another, another song, song by virtue of being influenced by some form of money or money. gratuity, mm-hmm. that means you are being, you are, you are taking payola. payola. But on a normal radio station where, mm-hmm. you know, people hit you up like, Charlie, me me promo to it, like a promotion. So mm. Charlie, maybe some something small to help you, you know. Mm. I have gone on a radio rant on several occasions saying that it makes sense because music promotion worldwide costs a lot of money. I get it. I have I have done that because I believe that as much as the artist or the executive producer or whoever is behind pulling strings or making sure the music gets to the final consumer makes money at the end of the day, everybody in the value chain also, value chain also needs to make some form of money True. because we've been in a system where artists at the end of the day have all the form of funding, all the, all the form of uh, lifestyle, luxurious lifestyle. Cause you see uh, artists will buy, I mean, in the power, but as a born you way, born you way, I feel I hate it. So right now you call the artist and then, so where, uh, where we get it wrong. Yeah. So okay. that is where I'm coming from. I'm coming from the fact that if it's not institutionalized mm. and it's promotion, mm. cause if like I have a three hour block, mm. for example, and I have a list of songs that I have to play, and I go contrary to it. Mm. 
that I believe is a crime. Mm -hmm. How do you see it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, to me, payola is wrong mm -hmm. in all forms that it comes. Mm -hmm. And payola is like this. You cut the person the price. Yes. And say, pay X. To do this work for you, this is what I'm going to do. And I keep asking one question. Okay, so if the person demands a receipt mm -hmm. for the money they are paying, <laughs> what exactly, which receipt? Are you going to give them a receipt from the station? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to give them your personal? Because at the end of the day, you get paid mm -hmm. to play exciting music. Yes. That's going to keep people in tune to the station. Okay. You understand? When the person comes out of your own, you know, and say, oh, senior, hold this for your thinkings to come short. That's different. Mm -hmm. That's a gift. Okay. Payola is to pay, to play for you these three months. Mm -hmm. You're going to pay 2000 every month, mm -hmm. which I don't see where the money goes. really goes or who takes the receipt. Is the station aware that you're taking this money for this purpose? Mm -hmm. Is the station not paying you just to do a certain job? job? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, Payola is wrong. But what I got to a point that I regretted mm -hmm. not taking payola. Why? Because we help these artists get to the top. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At a time, we were here. They were there. Mm -hmm. We lifted them, them up to our level. Mm -hmm. And we even pushed them up to a higher level while mm -hmm. we were still here. Yeah. And what did they do when they got up there? They are shitting on us. Mm -hmm. That's where it becomes a problem. Because at this point in time, now that they've gotten there, we're supposed to have a relationship and feed off each other. That's yeah. what you said, the ecosystem. The ecosystem. That's has right, to yeah. feed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So if I'm a DJ and my yearly salary comes up to, let's say, 35000 uh, let's make it more, 50,000 50K. a year. Yeah. And you are an artist and you come and stand on stage for 30, 30 minutes. minutes. <laughs> you're making like 100K. And you're making that 50,000. <laughs> it's definitely going to make me greedy too. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. if you, the artists, are not helping me in any way. Exactly. So how does the artist help? And see people say, oh, I'm a Chelsea card. No. No. The artist endorses your stuff. Mm -hmm. The artist comes to play for you for free or yeah. a lesser amount that you did something for me yeah. earlier. Yeah. I'm here today yeah. to support what you're doing as well. Yeah. That's how they return. But when they don't do that, it makes us who sacrificed earlier for them exactly. be like, okay. So, but you know what hurts? They have made it already. They have their numbers. They yeah. have they've been places, their network. The young ones coming up. That's what the issue Every is. Every DJ is going to be like, you know what? Give me the money now before you get mm. there. If you get there. Because once you, like you get we there, we will see. And that's been the culture. Yeah. And we can talk about why the music is not growing as much as we think it's going to grow. First of all, big respects to all Ghanaian artists. Yeah. They've done incredible. I think we should give them a, yes. a yes. hand of... GH artist. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody that thinks where they are at mm -hmm. is not good enough is somebody who's not contributed a dime to the struggle. Mm. If you've been in a struggle, you appreciate where they are yeah. now. Yeah. You really appreciate yes. where they are now. See, every African country has you two. Mm -hmm. All the countries have musical. Exactly. We are lucky. Your boy Nigeria, your boy Ekan. Mm -hmm. That Nigeria, sometimes you want to go against them. It's very funny to me. You can't fight them. It's a numbers game, first yeah. of all, and they have the numbers. Yes. Don't be stupid. Just be realistic. Mm -hmm. It's a numbers game. Exactly. They have the numbers. Exactly. If you are big in Ghana, you are not even as big as somebody who's only known in Lagos. Mm -hmm. Add the rest of the states to up, mm -hmm. and you sleep. Mm -hmm. You are asleep. Facts. So chill. Let's chill and rather use the advantage that we, we share a lot of things 
will come in on. common. Yeah. So based off that, when they mention us, they will mention us. They, will, they because the kind of moves that they make to be where they are, mm. we are nowhere near there. Mm. Of late, there was this. 70 30 thing, play, play Ghana. Ghana thing that I was very <laughs> mad at. I was like, because I saw what? a video of you, yeah. I'm like, you guys, uh, especially all the artists that joined in, excuse me to say, you guys have no regard for DJs. You can't talk like that to DJs, you can't sit in your home and just program or plant the DJs. The DJ is, if you have any respect for a DJ, you will know that the DJ is employed by somebody for a specific job. Mm. The one who pays the DJ tells the DJ what What to to do. do. You can't sit in your house and be in your fairy tale, utopia or dreamland and think that you can control. Even your auntie, I said the same thing, your Mm. auntie's shop, Mm-hmm. Can you just walk and go and tell her what to sell? No. Auntie, they say, Beso ton katie. Jai. Ana ton zomi. Jai. 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 Can you go and do that? <laughs> this is serious. You see, anybody that has respect for a DJ won't even talk like that. But we had a DJ on stage. We had DJ men on stage. I'm saying that you won't even think like that. Don't think like that. Because the moment, you see, it's like you are thinking that the DJs, they are just there. And they, they, do, they do anything at all. Uh-huh. You understand? They all can almost the baby edge man. Anytime a DJ, masa, oh no, now for who pay Indian music? Mm-hmm. Now we are wedding. We are friend DJ. So my me bo Indian music. Who bet me a call? Say yes, seventy thirty. Indi me bo Ghana jum. Debi. The account seventy thirty no two hours can. I say me and me high. I was a bra me wedding. I say no na me two hours. Yeah, me me use. Thank you very much. So that thing in itself is unrealistic. Mm. To talk like that. Oh, okay. To even think like that is unrealistic. That I can control a DJ. And, let it, and the playing of the music, repetitive play. Listen, those days that we were doing the, we name our belly, our Pietus in the mix plenty. Mm-hmm. How far did the music go? But this music was repeated for us. We enjoyed Quite it. Stanley, yeah. But that, that's, that's not what's going to make the music. It's the quality of the music. Mm-hmm. How many of our artists are going for voice training? Debbie. Okay. Oh, there's a voice there. Debbie, man, yes, sir. Debbie, Debbie, Debbie. Debbie, Debbie, Debbie. You don't see your story at training now, yeah? One day, voice training, grand and tell you, yeah? Physical. Physical training, gym. You see how we bring you, but it's me, But a fro, me. No, but. Be a juma, man, but train, no, say, no, no, say, no, say. It's not a joke. What who me cry, actually, what you can perform on stage. Mm. What you say? Those are the things you should concentrate on. Now, Oma can say, Oma can say, wow, say Nigeria, a bunny, I'm going to say, yeah, yes. Who has done that research to say that that is what helped the Nigerian's music? Succeed? Nobody. But people feel Even that. Even Nigerians themselves yes. are not cautious about that. Yeah. So why do you sit in Ghana and think because they did that, that's why their music is growing? Do you know that because there was a time too that they put a million dollars in the careers of some yes. artists? And not the other now can come. Investment. It do be be a over trees gano. I know the young can come. Young couple DJs ready. You see, it do be be a over trees gano. I know the young fan cast story. No say. There's also that part. If you put a million dollars in, you choose like fifteen of our artists, and you put a million dollars in their life. Oh dear, somebody has said now. Man, they want fan be more now be be a before my business. We could try video six thousand. We pay six thousand. Yeah. Whatever. Because I'm thinking, I'm thinking, the government said like in 2000, and that's 2022, mm. 2023, mm. they made over $2.5 billion out of, you know, the year of return. And I'm Thank thinking, you. like, how hard is it? Because, oh, they wait. Oh, let, let me choose my Listen, do we right. have rooms where... Let, let me choose my words right. Okay. Oh, there's <laughs> where Jimmy Crowd. And Kofona brought $2.5 billion, right? It's the same artist. Okay, Mamini five for that, that's one. Or they five from money. Let me pick like artists, like 10 of the top artists. 500,000. 500,000. Summer. Obi Anko everywhere in the world. Go and promote your music and sell Ghana, Ghana. at the same time. How hard is this? I'm mean, out of Saskatchewan. Obi Anko. Video clip of video of, uh, one uh, uh, Ghanaian tourist, tourist site. Obi, Obi Anko video man? back home. How? Like, how hard is it? How don't we put in football? And then, let me share program. And I say, I buy the 100 million every year, share Premier League. 
100 million. What do we really get out of football? Me, I'm lost. <laughs> but I'm thinking, even as a people, how much energy we put. A big appetite crack to me, right? Because you're a shitty team. And I'm looking at them like, yo, Africans, of all the problems we have, <laughs> it's a distraction. Me, football, me, only as a distraction from concentrating on our core problems. But football is also selling Ghana to a large extent. How? Okay. I've been, okay. I've been in countries. Slim. I've been in several How countries. How many okay. people will mm. fly and come to Ghana and say, I want to see Abedi Pele? It depends on how football no. is being packaged. Seriously. Seriously. Mm -hmm. How many people will fly from here to, I don't know where Zidane or whatever is from. Z Zidane is from France. Okay. They've packaged their football yeah. well. How many of us will fly to France and say, I Okay, so so I will, in, in, in defense, I will say this, mm -hmm. that when Diago Maradona da passed, that, mm -hmm. passed away, mm -hmm. there were people that flew from different parts of the world to, mm -hmm. you know, visit the, the mm -hmm. site and also this be part of- This is one extreme extremely. example. Okay, but then I'm saying that it's because of how the country also projected Diego Maradona. Yes. So if we have a proper system over here that projects, because you see Americans are building their league now mm. and they are using foreigners to build it mm. because of the fact that they have people investing in their football. Their football is so big, they can afford to buy a player like Lionel Messi, mm. uh, Lionel Messi to join their team. They right. are planning on buying top stars to even join their league. Mm. Saudis are doing that right now. Since we don't have that, we can't build, because Skaneba, Amon Fubi Neede, or Mutiti Skanidi. So, yes, football, I believe, can equally do that. But it's far fetched because it's riding on the bedrock of corruption. Because we have the GFA, and this is. This is me saying this. You can mm. take me on. We have the GFA madly in, in, in bed with the, the Ministry of Sports, you know, and the, Charlie, I how get can it you go for a tournament Bro, that the I prize mean, money is I, like I, a $7 I, million? I, I, I get it and you want see, to spend $8.5 million? Um, I grow best so if you are the part, no matter what it yeah, is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one, one place to say, a cross sports stadium, uh -huh. the investment. Crazy. Man. I'm not saying let's stop football, but I'm saying how much effort and money, how much attention yes. and money we give it. Yes. It's not worth the returns. I do side with you on that. You understand? I do side Foot, with you. Uh, on that. Entertainment. We've not put nothing in there. Look at the returns. The other day I saw Forbes bring Shatawalis or see 15 million dollars or something. Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, even somebody tell them that it's about 25. He has this amount in estate. That's how much money from zero. Listen, it's word sound that was put all. together. That's we all. didn't take any of our, our cocoa. We don't, go, we don't go touch cocoa. We didn't take any of our gold and say we've turned it into chocolate now. So come and eat it. It's things that you can't touch. Words. That we've turned it into a thing that's feeding a lot of, out of Shatawale alone. You know the number of people that are feeding off him? Yeah. Or sack. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And how much has the government put in it? Zilch. Oh yeah, Mufa. Five million mission. Nah shit. Yeah, was about the five million shit. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I do side with you on that. You understand? I do side with you. Just for example, send your football pitches. Yeah, academy. Astro Tefs or Connors Connors. How are you creating places that people can go and learn the strings? Yeah. Or the piano? Yeah. For free. A young man who's interested in music. Mm -hmm. Are you giving them any of those things? Yeah. No. But meanwhile, and it's those giving are the you things, a lot of money every yes, year. Those are the things that are also, that's going to give us better music. When an artist knows an instrument, it's he crazy. gets better. Yes. One of the things that's changed the destiny of Shatawale mm -hmm. was him going to learn sound engineering. Yes. Because as a sound engineer himself, he's able to bend some words that he can't say live. Mm. But he will bend it and it will sound good using technology. Yeah. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So who are you helping? Creative arts. They've been there seven years and counting. Yes. Which one single person have they helped tune their music? Or tell you we have any Kofobia Master War. US. But there's a whole ministry for that. They've taken salary for seven years. Bro, let's calculate their salary. 
And they are directors. They are directors within the ministry. Bro, I say let's put all that salary together today and ask. What have you done? Which one artist have you found a voice coach for? Because the music, you know, and yet, and your man, kitty, 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 oh, a voice, I see Jesse, man, main training. Mm. The more you train, the more you see some corners you can take your voice, mm -hmm. that will make your music super. Okay. Uh, sound engineers, you know, what are we doing to help them? Mm -hmm. Dr. Dre, yeah, a master class. Mm -hmm. oh, eh. yeah. How much does it cost? How many people, how many of these are creative as for I say, Yamamo Sevi, Munko Munko, Dr. Dre, a online. But Montana Gana, how much money is that? China for you, you. China for you. See, how much money is that, Unia? But they've taken pay. What have they actually done mm. to help the music? Zilch. Nana Kwame was set up on the so man is my special guest today on the Lounge Lounge. We're having a very, very deep conversation. And they coincide, Ankasa. Uh, we, we started off with the urban radio. I mean, we're, we're diving off. We're, yeah, we're moving into uh, uh, ministry that is uh, creative arts and culture. Mm -hmm. uh, that is Nankasa. That is Nankasa. That is Nankasa. And recently, and yes, because recently I'm a question. In fact, yesterday, um, a issue a publication came out that there's been a reshuffle, mm. and now Dr. Awa is no more the minister in charge of uh, creative arts and culture. Mm. There's one Mr. Mesa who is a MP for Western, mm. who's now taking over. And I think today I was also on the show Daybreak Hits with Andy Dusty, and then the conversation popped up about how effective he is going to be in the last 10 months of, you know, the year. Because, yeah, 10 yeah. months, yeah. Yeah. see, chapter two, uh, 10, pay. Yeah. they say, year and I end it. And I believe that, you know, he there's very little that he can do. He's just here to mark time. Truly. Yeah, there's very little that he can I do. Uh, if you're and, and, and I also realized that, you know, say, yeah, the biggest achievement for the creative arts and, you know, uh, creative arts ministry would be the year of return and how big they've been able to amplify it mm. and all that. There's There are also other stuff in there that I personally do not understand. When uh, Jankuma jumped on stage with mm. Small God and a couple of people, mm. her ministry directly invested $5 million into Afro Nation. <laughs> Remember that. I do remember that. Remember that. Directly invested five million dollars into Afro Nation. That is a Nigerian company. Brand. Directly enabling artists that they mounted, they they put on their stage. Mm -hmm. And if you ask artists that performed at this event, that you know, that of course they are grace to artists and mm. and Obiani said the Tianeka. But then you realize that hundreds and thousands of dollars were paid to Nigerian artists. Wow. Whilst we had Ghanaian artists and we had Ghanaian event organizers who could, you know, we could have enabled to do that. So mm. I felt that at the end of Kasano Krano, I know more dynasty, you know, so you know, plus and minus B. But then fast forward from you know, government and all that, because on one seven day, I can say can I read back can I see every year. But with urban radio format and the contribution that it has done, that I mean, mm. it has directly given us the biggest artists in Africa right now. Mm. I mean, some of the biggest artists in Africa Africans right now Africans. coming from Ghana. We can talk about Sakwade, we can talk about Stoneboy, the Shatawales, we can talk about Manifest, we can talk about a whole lot of artists mm. directly being influenced by urban radio format. Mm. Some of the misconceptions about, about you know, urban radio format when it was starting. What are some of them? I want to listen to it because okay, so I'm sure you, you went through several challenges. a resistance mm -hmm. for urban radio. And this is why. Okay. Uh, black people, we have a lot of self-hate. Mm. Yes. As a people... The things that will even grow and become big for us, we fight it mm. naturally. Yes. Um, out of that self hate, let me give you an example. And, and listen, oh, same way for hip hop. Okay. When hip hop started, 
There's a lot of people like, eh, eh, it won't go far, it won't grow, it won't do this, it won't do that. Now look at the biggest names 50 out years there. down the line. Look at the biggest names mm. out there. How much power is even in these hands? Mm. And they, they to me, I get my problem with them. Mm. If you think that Jewish people are messing with you, why don't you come and do what the Jewish people are doing mm. in Africa? Yeah. Now that African music is growing, yeah. and instead of cheating us like the way they, the people are cheating you, do right by us. Mm -hmm. You have the money, you have yeah. the power. Yeah. You can come to Africa, like Balotelli said some other time, mm -hmm. why don't we organize our own thing and forget about these mm -hmm. people? Mm -hmm. You understand, you have the power. Mm -hmm. But somehow we get caught up as black people in things and, you know, but this is what it is. Like I said, urban music programming grew out of that black music, mm -hmm. inner city, ghetto projects, music that became big. Now, those types of music comes with all types of attitudes. So for example, the time I'm sure I said time I was starting Groove FM. Hey, go for no bon yum nan, go for no I'm I'm show my jeans, you know, backward. That's kid and play. I'm more from more from more from more to you know my show with star be no women I bought you know. So I'm gonna say man. Yeah. Yeah. So there's always a resistance from the older generation. Me, let me tell you something about YFM Kumasi. <laughs> tell me here, yeah, man. I'm ready for it. So when we started YFM Kumasi, na kwesi ada na pa man for ba sorry nyo. Hip hop ni ba ba wa wa yipio yipio. Bisi hip hop jina mu de de. Hip hop for no bigger. Na we had my I, I actually this I remember me ni akwa Facebook, and he was a marketer for one radio station. Okay, and was like He's trying hey, to tell you that yeah you're wrong. I didn't know now radio station be ma be biin wo Kumasi ya mu de. I was like, yo, yo dear. Yo dear, concentrate. Because at the end of the day, concentrate. Yeah, go cry. Yeah, 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 in a crowd, when you started, like, how was it like? No, it's, you see, that's always been the thing about urban radio. We want to know the question about for you. That way, the OTS here, it's culturally, even, even back there, like I said, out there in, okay, that was off camera, but out there in the States, when even FM started, mm -hmm. there was no way black music was going to end up on Cross over to that. It was seen, it was seen as, Get to phone you when uh, you got junkies way near the area when you want my body. You know, that kind of thing. It was uppity. Mm -hmm. It was like bougie. Bougie, yeah. To be on FM. Mm -hmm. Till it got to a time, the technology. But the music crossed over so much that they couldn't help. Mm -hmm. But put it on radio because you see, that's what there people was wanted to hear. You could do all black music and appeal to a broad audience. Mm -hmm. But when the music crossed over, yeah. you could do that music. White people will still check for yeah. it. The black people who are not getting any radio now, because now yeah. had a chance yeah. to listen, hear their own music yeah. on radio yeah. and continuously being played. It always, it also grew. Yeah, the the Fact. the music. Fact. You understand? So it was a symbiosis type type thing. Fact. But always there's a resistance. Mm. Always there's in definitely going to be a resistance. In Accra. in Accra. Why did the rest of them not survive? It's one of the reasons. Like, ah. Accra was, Accra was supposed to be like a Cosmo. Like, no, Accra, Accra is as Cosmo be... as it is. We are culturally kind of backward. Okay, because of our culture. We have, we have a culture in God. You know what I'm saying? Even pidgin language Accra has been frowned on. No, 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 bro. An example is Pigeon English. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Pigeon English is urban, mm -hmm. but nobody wanted their kids to speak Pigeon. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. say a cell brothel. Mm -hmm. But me, I've heard people speak Pigeon English in a way that. Let me see a term that I heard. I remember some senior way back. Um, said the guy, the bomb is stiff. The bomb is stiff. Mm -hmm. That's not easy 
easy expression. Yeah. It'd be pigeon. It'd be pigeon. But I say the guy that bought me stiff. Mm -hmm. Come on now. That's that's a different. I appreciate it. That, that's a different language. I appreciate it. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why we can't fight Nigerians. Because linguistically, Nigerians are way ahead of us because they play with language. And they grow with the words. They, they are not words. uptight. Yeah. Ghanaians are uptight when it comes to English. Mm -hmm. To the extent, say, you mm have -hmm. a It's menka. Menka crowd. And I make safe English. Mm -hmm. Ubisa Ghanaians, 10, one questioner. Eight of them might probably answer with the same words. Mm -hmm. Because that's what they taught themselves that that's the answer. Mm -hmm. They won't be fluid with the language and find another way of answering that question. Mm -hmm. They will do the safe one. They will be track correct. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't help for literature. Okay. You should be fluid. Mm -hmm. When Nigerian says, God punish your mouth, it's not English. Yes. Like, it's not grammar like you want. Never. But the moment he said it, you got the picture. Language is about communication. Yes. Do you get the picture from what I'm saying? Yes. So, the moment Ghana, Niger man tell you, God punish your mouth, you have the picture right. But the words that they put it, the Udi Kochre, British. No, it's wrong. God punish your mouth. How is that? As in... What exactly? Yeah. But or can't share one. What's your see? Yes. Or what's your see? No. Why you need to marry? Yeah. Language is about communicating. Yeah. What's your see? So they've been that. they've been fluid. So we rather have to appreciate and learn. Opa, mm. for the toppest Ghanaian literature people, mm -hmm. and put the toppest Nigerian, we don't come close. I beg. If I Upgraded language. It's not. It's not how they even upgrade. But that's what I'm saying. They are very expressive. Yeah. Because they are, they are cool with the language. They like to. They are even evasive. Mm -hmm. I don't go there. Or Pache say wa 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 But I say don't. I don't go Which there. Yeah. Make you think I didn't go there. Yeah. But I say I don't go there. Wa mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah. They play with the language. Mm -hmm. But we are a little uptight. So that resistant. And because of the uptightness, mm -hmm. no. Yeah, yeah, cut your local language in a year because mm -hmm. okay, we are crossing it. Mm -hmm. And I hear so I encabro for year because we so it leaves a lot of our thoughts as Ghanaians. There's a lot of things we want to say, but we can't say it. Because yeah, to me in Kanwa, your local language and and I yeah, I yeah, to me in Kanwa, bro. But from and I say when any young kakra, it's one of the reasons why we are not developing as a nation. Mm. Because when it happens like that, you are not sharp, even in your quests for answers. Okay. 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 Because I remember. Yes. I remember even in class. Publishing. I used to ask questions and people were like, yeah, that's why we need you in this class. You should be coming to class. Because just being able to articulate the question and putting it in words will let somebody not even say it. Nation won't tear the nasi. No, see class him not teacher and they say, is everything okay or say yes? Because on tear yes. So we have that deficit, which mm. we should change. Mm. Expressing ourselves. Mm. Nigerians do that. And it goes into their music. It goes into their literary works mm. easily. Mm. So the moment you realize it, because you see, the only way you can solve a problem is realizing there's a problem. Mm -hmm. If you act like there's no problem, you play that, ostrich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who do there's no, how do you even solve it in the first place? Yeah. There are some things that they have over us that we should just accept mm -hmm. and learn or find ways of entering it. Mm -hmm. A black sheriff entire you know. mm -hmm. sabuano sabuano numbers yeah a place on the side numbers yeah what you say yeah we should be smart and find ways instead of fighting them because no matter what you do they naturally have numbers and when there's a lot of people eh it's competition mm -hmm. so the best will come out fantastic out of a lot of people so when when I mean language. Was one of the one of the resistance that 
you know, urban radio phase one. Yes, language. Language. Slangs. Yes, slang. Yeah, we would yes. Now that time you start here, no. Now be be a popular. I'm on for Taka Lafa. Lafa. Locally acquired foreign Saturday accent. Yeah, now you're a buffoon. I'm like, see, have you lived somebody's life? Mm-hmm. Do you want to dictate how, how somebody speak? Okay, me. Mm-hmm. I lived most of my life in, let's say, North Ridge was a two or three star hotel. North mm-hmm. Ridge Hotel. Yeah. Eh? Most of my life. Mm-hmm. Many, a lot of people have interacted mm-hmm. from foreign. Yeah. Why do you want me to speak a certain way? And no nanche. So be ka French. Yeah. No, you su. Connect. Debbie. In the other end, so be ka American English, no person or canon. Send your hot in the pepper pair. Also, a problem. Also, when you're also so for America, that mm. what's wrong with that? Mm. Mr. Nami Bunin Quasia said, Papa, 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 papa. anytime anybody says Lafa, I just laugh at you like you are so small thinking that is not even funny. First of all, you don't know the story. Mm-hmm. Of that person speaking to you. Crazy man. See, I know enough now who you see as some riffraff mm-hmm. who lived his life with these missionaries. Mm-hmm. He grew up like a white boy. He was taught, he knows how to pull, to pull it together, uh, pull it apart, a motorbike, and put it together. He grew up like a white boy. Mm. You don't know people's destinies and lives. You don't control. Why do you want to control Charlie, how people have to speak? Let me let me share this with you real quick. Eh? Mm. I have I have two uh, two young girls, right? Mm. Like they're they're from uh, other side of my family, and mm. they travel with their parents to America. Right. Now Omoko drew on. Now I was here integrity Omoko school. And this, I kid you not, this is real story. Mm-hmm. After Omo classes, Omo class in Abeyano, they had a special class just for to. just for them to understand the language and speak like, like it's supposed, like to. It's supposed yeah. to be. Because as an Tinekra teacher, no, say in Kwarana and Tiasia, Omo Timi, Charlie. I go America, let's say, I go one summer. The next summer, I go. go and Kwadani, nine years and. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. No, but what's wrong with that? And then, you know why today you're not hearing that? Because yes, it was so for- practice, Debbie. It was practice. Yes. Practice makes perfect. Mm-hmm. So now people have perfected yeah. that way of speaking. Yeah. That nobody... <laughs> Notices now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Na, la fa, yeah. We have to encourage it. Nah, man, first day, da. Mm-hmm. Hey, why FM I just slang you as I had yeah, yeah, yeah. Why social media? Media. Present as the social media. And then why FM there? But I saw it as not something not even to be discussed. Mm-hmm. Me, hun, me, me like I didn't even give attention, I didn't try defending mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Or anything, but I just saw it as okay, and especially I'm mm-hmm. too quiet than I know yes, I know. And I was like, okay, so the person lived here. Oh, the freedom. Do you want to take all the freedom from them, including how they speak? <laughs> I mean, if they are speaking and the tenses are all over the place, I can understand mm-hmm. you have a problem with it. Yeah. But if their tenses are on point, point everything. <laughs> but you think, say, oh, yeah, Ghanaian, no, you should hear a certain way. Mm-hmm. And you are not hearing that. And but because even, of even, that, you have a problem with even that. Even Ghanaians, if try I mean, to be our be, accent or yes, Because time. of that, you, know, you think you have a problem with that. You are, me, uh, anybody like that, I think you are so small-minded, I shouldn't give you our attention. Crazy, I don't. Man. No. I never reacted to it. It mm. was one of the things that was happening. That one of the yeah, yeah, just like was, you said, yeah, resistance. Yeah, yeah. like oh, mm. why from the several from mm. yeah, seven years from seven. there, and I'm oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But the thing is, why not? Mm. It's just language. Mm. Oh, because I don't see a funny pair. We believe in China for China for to me. Cause we hear draw, why hear draw here tomorrow? It do label, it do 
People are on trunk and what? No, I trunk bro for basa the account. Mm. That's that shows you how much he doesn't give a fuck about the language. Yeah, I'm fine. Opa, you su maning a ye. I don't even say that don't ye. Opa, man ye. Opa, you su pa man you su forget it. Bro, fun tino. Bro, bro, fun be a one chun ye tino. Who you su a drone a jai? Forget it. That's how. That's what we should have. Mm. We are always afraid of the language. Mm -hmm. I say, yeah, mm -hmm. crow crow, mm -hmm. bro, fun. Let's fuck with it. It's somebody's language. Mm. How many white people have you seen in this life mm -hmm. that speak up street? No, no, no. They don't. They don't care. And they don't care. So, bro, fun need bro, fun country no bar. And find yourself. Okay, bro, fun need bar. Hey, what go a bush your phone? Ni masi. Listen, Ogba. What say Bibia? What we are saying? Just from your heritage, they are digging that. What's it? <laughs> now, as we wrap up, boss, mm. yeah, I mean, uh, there's been a very, very insightful conversation. Bro, we can uh, talk for days. Yeah, we can talk for days, man. And I, I, I love every bit of it. Um, conversation about some of the personalities that joined Y. Okay. And later on, you know, because it's, it's been one of the things that people, a trend ask, that about. people ask about. And you know, the exit of some of the names, the known brands on the radio, mm. you know, um, myself, I could, I could, I could say, okay, me there from Y Kumase. And, you know, sometimes when I come to Accra, you know, passing through Accra, mm. Accra YFM. <clears throat> and even some of the events that Y Accra, um, no. near mm. but then, you know, there were known brands, uh, J, J Foley, uh, currently, is on uh, uh, three, three music, three music TV. Yes, sir. Um, Giovanni. Show on, show on, show on, show on, show on, show on, show on. It's more there, more there. Um, Giovanni, Giovanni is with, uh, now with Media General. Um, Miss Nice is no more in the country. Texas, or Yeah, I, I saw a video of her last time. I think. And uh, the niece and uh, the niece was driving some one, bands, some right? bands, yeah, some, car, so, yeah. some yeah. bands, and so then she was like, "Yeah, okay." And uh, DJ Flexi, I mean, you know, abandoned ship. Okay, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, who else? Who else? I mean, Jeremy. Okay, so so just top notch, like big names. I, I met see, I met Killer Fingers in see. Virginia last year. Okay. What, what I can say to that is yes. radio does evolve. Mm -hmm. And some of these things that have happened, I am actually excited about it. Mm -hmm. Like I said, when I completed school, there was not even one urban music station in Kumasi that I could mess with, mm -hmm. even in Accra. The mm -hmm. only one that existed was underground mm -hmm. around that time. Mm -hmm. Now, along the line, we've made urban music program and exciting to the extent that people have wanted to invest in it. A, yeah. So now there's competition in the crowd. Yes. Based on you, crowd, mm -hmm. there's competition in Kumasi one and all of that. Yeah. And what do they do? They have to take people from yes. inside us yes. to create these new brands. Yes. Which I am not mad at because mm -hmm. I've always wanted competition. You see, one of the reasons that I'm here is to let people understand that what we sleep on, mm -hmm. urban music programming that mm -hmm. we are sleeping on, yada, yada is found. key to our development as a people. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. And to have more of that, and urban development is not going to stop. Mm -hmm. Africa is urbanizing. Yes. And it has no intention to go back. No, 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 no. So urbanization is going to stay forever. So urban music programming mm -hmm. is going to stay forever. Mm -hmm. Radio is cheap entertainment, mm -hmm. even in America. And I'll, before I go, I'll tell you a little story about radio. How resilient radio is. Mm -hmm. Radio. Radio, radio or TV by it. Don't you say, radio may say, I'm a boy, it's still here. Mm -hmm. Internet by it. Don't you say radio by call. Still. I'm a boy, if you don't want to internet address, mm -hmm. what do you say? You will move on social media by radio. Social media, maybe the stream. Who didn't 
What do you see? You want a podcast by? Mm-hmm. Look at some of the biggest podcasts in the world mm-hmm. and tell me if it's not radio presenters. Even mm-hmm. the settings for most podcasts <laughs> it's radio. is radio type setting. Yes, it's radio. That's how resilient radio is. And apart so for those people who think investing in radio is nonsense, no, especially urban radio is nonsense, no. They should think again. Mm. That's the future. Mm. Mm. That's the future. Mm. What you see? So through us, no. A lot of people have poached mm-hmm. and set up their new things. It's gone on and on and on. Um, along the line, mm, mm-hmm. I told you, sir, urban radio stations are all Ghana. None of them crossed five years. Mm-hmm. We've been able to stand for 15 years. Inside that 15 years, there's been COVID. Mm-hmm. No station has seen that before. No urban radio station, and we still stand. Mm-hmm. You understand? COVID did its part. You see, for example, for our type of programming, a lot of your money comes from activations. Yes. And events. events. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. The moment COVID struck, all the budget, MTN, the budget here, 50,000 or 100,000. Yes, easy. We didn't know when we were going to come back mm-hmm. outside again. What do you say? So there will be casualties. Mm-hmm. And they have been casualties because it was, it was it, I asked this thing at a bad backdrop of you know certain uh post personalities, that, yeah, so. certain posts that Caroline, who was a, an integral part of YFM, you mm. know, they post to be or the Toto Abonte, thing, mm. you know, regarding how she they was got rid of her, how she you was see, let companies, go. companies have the right to, mm-hmm. unfortunately, yeah, by law, yeah, they can lay off at any time, mm. right? But it wasn't that type of layoff. Mm-hmm. This was crucial. Mm-hmm. Something the world has never seen ever before. Mm. And like I said, there was a time that South Africans invested in. Yes, That was where we had a lot of presenters. Me, my original programming, it was four hours, six to 10, morning mm. show. Mm-hmm. From 10 to 3, music. Mm-hmm. 3 to 7, voice, mm-hmm. drive, evening drive. 7 to 10, voice, Jeremy, lounge. Mm-hmm. After that, music, music again till 6 a.m. Yeah. That was my original programming. Mm-hmm. With people coming in and stuff, it changed. Mm-hmm. Now it got to a time we had, and you see, I also brought that, I established that presenter, producer, DJ, DJ thing on radio. Yeah. So every show has three people you have to pay. Mm-hmm. Presenter, producer, and, and DJ. DJ. Very few shows don't have that. There are some few presenters who like to DJ on mm-hmm. their own. Mm-hmm. Right? So that will be, but there will be a producer, at least two. Mm-hmm. So it was a lot of people on the that payroll. were employed okay. on the payroll. Yeah. If I show you the figures that around that time we were paying just payroll, you'll be surprised that an urban radio station could make that amount of money. Could make that amount of money and pay stuff. Wow. So it was a huge, nobody enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. It wasn't something that, that's why it took something like COVID to bring that out. Mm. It wasn't something that we were going to do easily. It was something that we were like, do or die. Mm. We could it, we, it was just, it, 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 was, it was a life and death type situation. Mm. And some people, I'm not proud. Listen, there, there were times I've been in interviews and I'm close to tears when names like that come up. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because I know most of those names, original names, I put them on. Mm. So I, I don't feel, I know their worth mm-hmm. before I put them on. Mm-hmm. So there's no way that I feel good about they mm. having to go. Mm. But life happens sometimes. Shit happens. Life happens and, you know, yes, yeah, some might get affected, mm-hmm. some might not. That's that's all I can say to, anyway, to uh, that story. Big, up, big ups to uh, all, all the all the fo- uh, former YFM stars. Yo, all Joey, of you guys uh, been great guys from... Yo, my guy, Joel. Uh, day one. DJ Mike Smith. Um, all of them. 
Mike know, Smith, I think, was lately. Yeah, lately. And I think he decided, he decided himself, to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I think I could. There, have, there's, there's a lot of. Yeah. It's, it's all not the same story. Yeah. yeah. Different, different yeah, stories. Different story. Like I said, for example, you, one, and all yeah. of that. And I I loved no, it I, when I, I saw it. I had it. to leave. I, I had to leave because, you know, um, mm. I, I, I was approached with. Uh, Lots of money, and I wanted the money at that. At That's that point. what I'm saying. Yeah, that. So I, I had to leave. You know, it can't just be YFM. YFM needs to face yeah. competition yeah. so that it can stay on its toes. On its toes, yeah. But I, so in the in the face of competition now, mm. you know, who are some of the people that are directly competing with the YFM brand in Accra here? If you ask me, I'm thinking. I mean, we've stayed number one in our niche. From day one, mm. you know, to date, nobody really has been able to cut. But if you ask me, something like Guide Radio, and even before they came, they approached me, so they're using some of my ideas and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, plus, maybe for how much music they play, mm-hmm. which y- you realized a little while ago, you, you came up with the observation mm-hmm. that you see as a quite an, an amount of talk on mm-hmm. YFM now, yeah. which is quite a drift. But like I, I showed you a little while ago, my original programming, mm-hmm. it's been tweaked and tweaked and retweaked. Mm-hmm. A lot yeah. of people have touched it yeah. over the years and it won't stay the same. But was, if you, if I was going to have my way, it was going to stay. That, okay. You know, okay. Yeah, a lot more music than the talk. So probably plus and guide radio trying mm-hmm. to kind of enter into that do. and I'm I'm, I'm 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 super excited about you know about that atlantis has always been there atlantis, atlantis i promised myself why. that yeah it was way before why i promised myself when i was leaving atlantis in my casting and that i was taking i was going to take it out in a year and i have a sign of it a sign of it report <laughs> that shows that why i took him? it out yeah. in a year 2009 Catch us who free her, but who free her? Nobody beat this at station. Yeah. That was how mad I was when I was leaving. You know, I was like, <laughs> yo, fuck everything. This station, they don't know. Yeah, I remember Northridge. My boy has a bar. Today I was even there by the DHL, right next door. We mm-hmm. hung out there. That was what I was cussing at. I was, fuck these people. What do they think? This is, this is, this is what I, I give them one year. I swear. One year. I go mafia yeah. them. Yeah. And I have a sign of it report that says uh, we had moved to number three or so. Usually the fight is between us, City, and Joy. Mm. You know, Atlantis, City, Joy, us. Mm. As in Because they kind of add us. And even us appearing on there is it's a, plus. It's a big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. You know, because we are in diff- totally different niche. Mm. But they kind of add us to them. And even adding them, adding us to them, we're sometimes able to beat them. There was a time that we were number one. Mm-hmm. You know, there's been times like that and stuff. But usually it's between these three in our line of programming, mm-hmm. although they are not really. So the hits and the plus, and they never come around, mm-hmm. you know, but I wish them the best of luck. I want, I want them to It is to what grow. it is, man. Nana Kwame says, I'm my special guest today on the Loud Lounge Channel, a wonderful conversation. We dived into urban radio, the importance and the, you know, some of the issues we did inside. Very, very, very you important. know, urban radio, they are the assembly about. And shouts going out to uh, YFM though. Uh, shouts going out to uh, Mahoney inside YFM Kumasi. Shouts going bro, out bro, to- bro, The whole uh, crew. Yeah, yeah, the whole crew. NY, inside. NY, and, uh, NY is a day one yeah, in yeah, Kumasi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the day ones in Kumasi, YFM Kumasi, we have DJ Flo. NY DJ, Kwame Scientific. Um, scientific is still there, right? Yeah, Scientific is still around. Sweet. And Hitman, DJ Hitman. Uh, he was, he's also a, a day one. Yeah, um, Hitman, I remember. Yes, the name. and uh, myself. Yes, these are the day ones, wife and Kumasi. And big ups to you guys, man. Amazing uh, journey that has been so far. And um, I like how wife and Kumasi still maintains their top spot mm. and how they, I mean, I, anytime I'm in Kumasi these days, I still. Drive by Charlie. Yeah, just to show love to the team because they've been able to hold the fort down. Same way yeah. with the crowd. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, it, it's sometimes <laughs> it beats when, me. Yeah, when 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 there's a 
when there's a uh, when there's an exit or mm. of one person, Charlie. Sometimes they are feely, and sometimes I mean, w- w- with my exit, it wasn't just me; it was myself and a couple of people. A couple so of people, yeah. not not shaking on wedding, but they've been able to resist. Survive, it. I mean, uh, shouts going out to them. As we wrap up, I just want to uh, uh, give you your flowers by saying God bless you so much. Charlie, I mean, you created you created a brand of radio that um. I've personally enjoyed a uh, brand of radio that I I love so much. Thank a you, brand boss. of radio that I mean is feeding so many people. I mean, I I don't know how my life would have been if it wasn't for Evan Radio. Thank you. Uh, I, I put to me. That's on. one thing I wanted to hear. Yeah. And also, some of the questions you're asking me today, nobody asks me anywhere. Mm. So I really appreciate this interview. Thank you, sir. Most of the things we've spoken about, people don't even. Either they don't think to that level or whatever, but you know, I never get asked some of what the the things that I know mm. when it comes to urban radio programming and maybe what I've been able to add to yeah. it. And I appreciate this interview. Thank you I so really much. Do. Well, Loud Lounge, you can leave your comments in a comment session. And uh, the next time we're fortunate enough to have the boss man in here, uh, we'll ask him your questions or comments as you will bring it out and read right. it. And then we'll have what a question. What do you question. say? Well, a background said, I mean, uh, Conversation is super yes, dope. Yeah. And uh, to all the urban radio stations mm. uh, in Ghana, uh, God bless you. And to op- everybody investing. To investors. Yes. Everybody investing in Please urban. make it a plan. Yeah. Get on there. It's the future. Yeah. Radio remains cheap. Africa yeah. is poor. Mm-hmm. So, you know, uh, even in the Americas where Still. lives have changed, Radio maintains its place. Yeah. So don't be thinking, you know, let's see, late, let's see. yeah, of late when you're <laughs> thinking, oh, now the radio, you see, yeah, yeah, podcast, yeah, 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 you know, the radio, 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 radio. No, I'm, I'm still on radio. Radio, I'm telling you I'm that. I'm still on radio. Radio is so resilient mm-hmm. that it's not funny. Radio, what did we be new, but say, what did we be beating her? No, I adapt. Chia can, no. I adapt, I can, yeah. Radio is not TV. Yeah. All the joy has a TV. Yeah. Uh, City has a TV. Every, Why I do all of that? Yeah. Why FM? We have a TV yeah. now. Radio is TV. Yeah. Social media. Radio Afa. Podcast. Afa. Radio, Radio is on. Yeah. Radio is on. So for those of you who still want to invest, don't stop. Mm. It's the future. Yeah. And the offshoot or the good things that come out of it, especially urban radio programming, mm-hmm. is immense. Mm. We've all seen. Yes. What? Yes. You are with me? What? Okay. Me later, I'll come interview you <laughs> about Asaka, Kumerica. Yes. yes, 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 yes. I want yes. details. No, I want to understand no, it. I, 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 will I it have down. an idea that YFM definitely, because some of the oh, names yes. that I see now, I remember from Cyphers way back. You understand? So I, I also want to, I want that information. It may be so crazy, yeah. man. Me, 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 me. Yes, <laughs> say, me, me, me. Yeah, and I'll break it down. I'll break it down. Podcast, I mean, to no, I'll, I'll I break it down. I will break it down because I was there when all these it things happened. started. And a movement started even before that. I mean, the Kumasa must rise and all that. I'll okay. break in a proper time. Please. You know, I'll, I'll break it I down. I'd like to know. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Charlie, Godfather. Thank you so, too. man. Nana Kwame will say Sapon. Thank you, too. It's been nice. Big ups to you watching. Ruby Red. Yes. Ruby, yes. Country of Sweden. <laughs> Big ups to you watching us. Uh, we'll meet next time. But remember, baby, I keep it safe because the street is always watching. Watching. Watch Peace out. <laughs>